And so with writers, are you hiring just writers and then just editors? So you have, so the piece of content will touch by multiple <clears throat> people along the process. What does that process look like from creation to published? Yeah, absolutely. So for anyone listening to this podcast, you're going to be like me. Uh, you're a business owner and content and SEO is a channel that you're using to exploit. We don't actually care about the words too much that are getting written. And so the first thing that like, as soon as possible, take yourself out of the editing process. Uh, you're going to do it initially, um, but your company is going to be better off if you can stop worrying about the words on the paper and you can focus on revenue generating activities. My business didn't take off until I hired an editor who ended up scaling with me to editor, content manager, project manager, director of operations, and now my co-founder helping me build work out and helping um, you know other content teams hire better writers. Love it. Going back to caring, caring is the, the one thing that you can evaluate in an interview cycle over two or three touch points with an editor. Um, the easiest thing for an editor to do is let things slide. You won't know how much they care until they start. And so all of our editors start off as writers because you can't fake caring for two to three to four to five to six months that you're going to be a writer before getting promoted. Mm. And at this point, we've promoted pro probably over 10 writers to editors, PMs, and other senior roles within our organization. Love it. So you basically start off with the writer, edit yourself at the start because you don't have an editor if you're just a newbie to this. And then <clears throat> after you know X amount of data points um, and articles written and you understand that the writer cares, you can promote them to editor and put other people, do another test of candidates for the, um, for the writing of it. That's and that's exactly right. I just tweak it. And then you have the I just tweak uh, it up. person Sorry, who is the ahead. editor actually help and support and teach the the previous writer, right? That's the that's the that's the real goal because then you can step away from it without having to do That's exactly right. for the first for the writer again. Yeah. That's exactly right. The only thing I tweak is don't work with one writer because if that writer is not good, now you don't have an editing candidate. Mm -hmm. Just like the more writers you test the better writers you'll hire, the more writers you hire, the better editors you'll promote. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's all like a pipeline problem. It is. Uh, it's all systems and pipelines. It's just the numbers game, right? It's just a numbers game. And so when you promote this person to editor, now it allows you to focus on like, you know, level up and, and kind of focus on higher level at the business. But you don't want that person to stop there because editing is just where you want them to begin. Mm -hmm. You also want them to take over hiring because you don't like that either. You want them to take over all the SEO stuff you don't want to do. You just give them a doc and they have to follow it and, and do SEO. And, and so there's kind of this dance where I, I hired this editor and then as she took stuff off my plate, I could level up. And then I gave her the next batch of stuff I didn't want to do. And then she leveled up mm -hmm. and then she would backfill the position behind her. And if they get stuck at editor, you still need someone to become your content manager and take over all content production. Absolutely love it. What are your top two or three tips for somebody that's looking at hiring and has no idea other than what we've already talked about? Um, you know, early on in my, in my career, I had to make a decision on whether to underpay Americans uh, or overpay foreigners. Um, yeah. And I decided that, uh, you know, I wasn't sure about this whole American exceptionalism thing. I'm not sure it exists. And I decided to hire a bunch of foreigners. And ultimately, I think uh, it was the right move to overpay, you know, people that don't live in a, the U.S. and rather than hire, hire people in the U.S. Um, it kind of changed my life. I ended up moving to Europe to support the team and, and build it. And I've been in Europe for three years. And um, even though my life is still boring, uh, it's all happening in a foreign country and, and that makes it kind of exciting. Cool. Cool. So overpaying, overpaying foreigners to get you the results. Yeah, absolutely. You know, people will ask, Hey, can non-native English speakers speak English? And my response is always the department of education says that 54% of Americans have an eighth grade reading level or less. Wow. And so most Americans can't speak English very good. And my team would chime in and say, Nick, it's well, because they spent, they got their master's degree studying all the grammar rules that we forgot in seventh grade. Yeah. Yeah. Or some people didn't even get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's, there's tens of millions of, of non-native English speakers that speak better English than Americans. And, and if you, if you feel like you're, you're not able to hire abroad very well, 
I would say I would go back to the number of candidates you're putting in your pipeline and, and that you're evaluating is probably the problem. And you can test it as well, right? You can have a candidate for, you can have a funnel for native English speaking and non-native English speaking and then test them against each other and sort of, it's all a, all a test. You can see which works best for you. That's right. But in COVID times where you're not applying for jobs 25, you know, within 25 miles, you're applying for any yeah, job, yeah. you know, all those, all those grocery store people really want to work from home and they're applying for your writing job. And so, you know, I think regardless of where you're hiring from or how much you're willing to pay, you're going to have low value candidates crowding out any type of job you post. And really the trick is, if 5% of my candidates are qualified and talented, how do I filter out the 95% so I'm only left with the 5% and do it in an efficient, fast way? Love it. 